Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the co-owner and creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and in this video I'm going to do a bit of a continuation about why dismissive avoidance can get so doubtful and sort of fearful about their, their feelings when it comes to a romantic relationship. So in the past video I went into why, in this video I'm just going to follow up and put some strategies in here because a lot of you guys requested. Um, so there's a ton of information on this. There's a ton of information I have about dismissive avoidant reprogramming tools, techniques, exposure response work around vulnerability, um, learning to see that relationships are safe, questioning stories, starting to identify and meet needs. There's a whole bunch of stuff. So I'm, for the sake of this video, gonna target those two core things we talked about in the past video. So if you haven't seen it, feel free to go back and, and take a look. Um, maybe I'll link it here. And so what you wanna focus on, if you are the dismissive avoidant, or you're the partner of the dismissive avoidant and they're open to hearing tools or learning different strategies, what you really wanna focus on is two core things. The things that are making dismissive avoidance the most question their, their feelings or doubt their feelings in a relationship are number one, the competing needs they have between like security and feeling like vulnerability and deep connection is unsafe. And so it, it tends to like cause friction up against that need they have for security. And number two, their deactivating strategies. I like to think of people getting drunk off their deactivating strategies and activating strategies. It's like you're not fully there. You're not fully present and in your right mind. How many of you have had the experience of like deactivating or if you're on the more anxious side of activating and then later been like, what came over me? Like, gosh, my feelings were so intense. Like I wish I had said something differently or not acted that way or, you know, fill in the blanks, right? The reason that that happens is because and this sounds wild, but it's just true. You're, you're kind of in this hypnotic state when this is taking place. And I really want to break this down. When you are deactivating or activating, you're experiencing stored emotions from the past that are basically lodged into your subconscious mind that are getting brought up because your conscious mind has basically opened the filing cabinet of your subconscious to be like, what is this feeling that we're feeling? We're feeling afraid. What other feelings do we have associated with fear and relationships? And then all of these, because your subconscious mind stores every single memory ever, and all those memories are colored with emotion. They get consolidated and kind of changed a little bit over time, but those emotions remain mostly intact. So all of that stored emotional memory you essentially have gets flooded to the surface. And if you pay close attention, when you are activating or deactivating, you're not here. You're not present you're in this like imagined future and you've got this movie playing out in your mind where you're imagining like the relationship falling apart, you hurting the person, the person hurting you, things going wrong in the end, you feeling alone and you're like imagining this movie, you better get out now. And all these passing thoughts and um, feelings and images that go through your mind, your subconscious mind emotes as if these things are actually real. So you have this combination of like stored emotion rising to the surface. Then you're feeding off of that, creating more thoughts and more images, which are further reinforcing this like painful space. And you're not like here, you're in like the story of your mind, thinking and feeling and thinking and feeling and imagining and and so you're not like sober in that moment. And and of course you actually are sober, but to make that analogy, right? You're not like fully sober. And so what we have to do, and uh, you know what, to be honest, I'm going to, I'm on a short time limit today. Um, cause I have a meeting in just a few moments. So I'm going to make like another video about this, but I'm, I'm going to break this down into subsections because the importance of this information is like crucial when it comes to being able to sort of gain back control over your own activating or deactivating strategies and notice, right? Like the anxious, has the same experiences. They have this imagined future of like the fear and the abandonment, and they've got this stored emotional memory from feeling abandoned or disconnected in the past. And those things are kind of melding together. And the output of that is like creating this movie in your mind of all these scary things that are going to happen, you being all alone. And you're not here with yourself when you are activating or deactivating. You're lost in your thoughts, right? So and your thoughts are really possessing you in those moments too. Like you're not in control of your mind. It's sort of the other way around. And there's ways to change this. Like, you know, I think people think, oh, this is an unchangeable thing. Like I can tell you, I was fearful avoidance and like, so do not get lost in my thoughts and stuff like that anymore. I have moments as a human being, but they're so small by comparison. Like these things can become so strong, but there's ways to reprogram this, ways to change this. 
So I'll get into all of this. I'm going to go through steps in the next video, but I'm going to give you just a, a core two pieces of information right now. Number one, you have to question those things that are arising. You can't just believe every passing thought as if it's the absolute truth because these thoughts are not the absolute truth. They're reflections of old experiences. It's like Wayne Dyer has this quote that I love and he talks about, you can't live your, your present and your future driving a car, looking in the rear view mirror. Like you can't drive your car by watching what's in the rear view mirror. And it's sort of the same idea. We tend to think or assume or feel on autopilot that whatever's happened in the past is bound to be the future. And we're sort of reprojecting these past memories and stored experiences onto the present moment. And then living as if like our past is just on repeat. And as long as we don't question these things and be like, okay, just because that was the past here, does that really mean this is going to be the experience here? What can I do differently? How can I show up differently? Can I really truly know that what I'm believing and thinking is 100% real, is 100% valid? Until we start questioning our minds and these thought patterns all the time, we will keep repeating these past experiences because we're living through these old patterns of behavior and we'll reenact these same coping mechanisms that we used in the past, which if you pay close attention, usually the behaviors we use to try to avoid these past wounds actually end up reinforcing them instead. So I am on a tight time limit. I'm going to make another video um, about how like step by step about how to question some of these things. I also want to highlight the importance of like the dismissive avoidant learning to meet their needs from somebody else in the relationship, in the relationships around them and get comfortable in doing that. That is a part of that number one thing I was talking about, which is the competing needs and feeling like it's unsafe to open up and be vulnerable. So there's work that has to be done around there too, but I want to focus on, um, noticing these movies we play in our mind and how we get drunk off of our activating and deactivating strategies essentially and kind of lose like presence and relationship to ourselves. So I will um, put this video up. I'll put some future videos up around it. I noticed a lot of people were really interested in this yesterday. So um, yeah, I'll do a little series around this. And also, um, by the way, we are doing 25% off sales for, for members right now. Um, the coupon code is with you. It's to support our community. We're offering scholarships because everybody's doing it like staying at home and isolated. So um, you can reach out to my team. You can click the link and um, you can get access to, we have something like 80 webinars or, or something now in our webinar library. And then we have 25 different courses. We keep adding two every month. We have a community, mastermind groups, all this exciting stuff. So I hope to see you in there and I will see you also in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.